Hey folks, Josh here. This is a bit of a cold open. Just wanted to apologize in advance for the audio issues we had on this episode, and I think the next one. Uh, long story short, new microphone, figuring it out. I apologize, but I think we got it dialed in for a future episode, so don't give up. Someone has a freaking rooster? Yeah, someone has a rooster. No, it's. Uh, I think it's an alarm. I think it's like somebody's... It sure sounds like a rooster, but it's... I, it goes off all day. All day. It's a weird ass alarm. I don't, I don't know. And the thing is, I don't know what you need to be alerted about that much during the day. Right. Because what I have figured out is it is not different crowing. No, it, that was same. identical. I just heard it twice it, and it was it identical. Is, they are all identical. That's weird. Uh, it is. I also is, know somebody it, needs a muffler. You know what? Oh my God. That's a big trauma point for me. What is... I have lived in the Uncanny Valley for a long time with that <laughs> fucking rooster crow. Two years I've been here, and a lot of it was by myself. That's funny. Oh, my God. I got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Holy shit. Right on. Okay, man, that is... Shall we do this, sir? Oh, that's a good... That is a good note to start on is... There you Drama. Go. Drama, hey. All right. Well, uh, and w- cool. welcome to uh, Two Brains, One Bottle. I'm Ooh. Josh. This is Sean. I'm Sean. And uh, thank you for supporting the channel. If you're listening to this, you're probably a patron. Holy shit, you just got your fucking money's worth. Woo-ha! Wow, way to start an episode off. Good start job, Start off buddy. with cocks, all right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, with roosters. Oh, man. Hey, uh, so this this is the... Uh, Starting off an episode with trauma. Hey, hey, Sean. Yeah, let's go. How do you get a letter to the Easter Bunny? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, candy trail, hop, grass, service, service, uh, down the bunny trail, filling up the field mice and popping them on the head. How? Hair mail. <laughs> it's the Easter show. God damn it. Oh, you think that's bad? Oh, that's good. Who's that's a good one? Who's the Easter Bunny's favorite celebrity? It's a twofer. Mm, oh, okay. okay you're going you're going to hate me for this bunny, one. Bunny, cottontail, uh, hair, rabbit. You're getting warmer. Um. Fuck. Give up. Yeah. Rabbit De Niro. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh. Uh, so. Yeah, I got the I got the, uh, wow. the painful clap. That was awesome. Oh. Oh man. Oh, that hurt my soul. Nice. All right. So Ooh, I have been through a roller coaster of emotions, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I hope you are buckled in because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Bumpy. Although what will not be bumpy is this teeling whiskey oh, that yes. we are drinking yes. and partaking in. We're continuing uh, to drink it. We are it. continuing the journey because to carry over from the last episode, I want to be adaptable. I want to be able to change and grow and have new and different feelings and experiences. When I grow up, I want to be a steam shovel. I just want to do. I want to do things. I want to do all the things. All the all things. of them. I want to jump off all the fucking cliffs into the clear blue water. I want to walk on all the beaches that have black sand. I want to do all of the things. But then that becomes your thing to do all the things. And then yeah, you're... but you know what? For some people, mm-hmm. their thing is. Wanting to watch that thing, and I'm okay with doing those things. So what you're saying is, you, you need, you do, need a GoPro. I do Hurt Bert. <laughs> Hurt Bert. Yeah, Hurt Bert. It was Bert Kreischer's show that he did, uh, where he went and did a lot of dangerous shit and got himself hurt. Oh, I remember that. Yes. Uh, it, it was what bad. did he have? One where he surprised like newlyweds or whatever with a dream trip. I don't know. It was full of adventure. I don't know. Um, I don't know about that one. I don't know enough detail about it. But okay, 
I've just watched uh, Bert stand up, and I watched Two Bears One Cave, and uh, I didn't really go into his past. Noise. Um, but I want to do all the things, and then I want. To, like I want to do it, and I like performing, so I want to do it in front of a camera, and I I get gratification out of that. Hey Amen. You know hey, why? You, why can't we just all? If you can get funding that? for that, I will go with you. <laughs> right? Like I'm, I've got ideas. I've got a lot of ideas. All right, you fuckers. This is what you're paying money for. I said it last episode. Write it down. For, I know. That's why. I, that's why yeah. we're recording it. Well, as we do here, I I like to pepper in a little bit of trivia. We like to learn here. A little, little bit. Oh, this is great. This is like a structure to a show. Very good. This is awesome. Yes, Look it's unfiltered. I didn't say, uns- we never said unstructured. We just said unfiltered right, and unedited. No, I mean, we just had continuity. We just did, yeah. we started off the episode one way and we there did a thing and now we're moving into a next segment. Stick this with is, me, kid. This is okay. awesome. So, oh, so you're just so, counting on me to ramble and rant. Okay. Oh, pretty much, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. You that's, are, that's fast and loose, baby. That is flying by the seat of your I, I hit play and you go. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Um, Easter trivia. The first Easter eggs, did you know this, were colored red in memory of the blood Jesus shed during his crucifixion. So all the Easter eggs were red. What, what makes more sense scientifically is that they're red from the menstruation. Wow! Oh my god, I thought it was going to take longer to get there than from, that. From pushing them out. I thought for sure you were going to take longer to get there. Oh my god. And no, that, this is the content dude, you paid for. I am medical, for. man. I am medical. Scientific. I Look, I get it. You're certifiable, that's for sure. No. I'm just, hey, well. I'm just, you know, I've grown up with horror movies my whole life. I hey. am not a stranger to seeing things dissected. Hey. And bisected. And cross-sected. Hey. Look at us. And blown up from the inside. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Not me. You might want to point the mic at you. Hmm? You might want to point the mic at, your, at yourself. I'm just saying. It won't sit like that. Oh. It'll just point down at the floor. So I'd rather capture okay. the room. The room's fine. I can project out. Radio. Uh, another bit of Easter trivia. It is believed by some that Easter was named after the Anglo-Saxon goddess Easter, spelled E-A-S-T-R-E, whose symbols were the egg and the hare, or rabbit. And there's, it's, I'm one of them. The, the Easter was originally called Ostara. It was a pagan uh, celebration that was, of course, co-opted by the church. Following that, in the 13th century, the church prohibited the eating of eggs during Holy Week, Marking the eggs laid during the week began the custom of decorating eggs. And they said, well, what should we, what color should we mark them? Let's mark them red like blood. Yeah. 13th century, man. 13th century was metal as fuck. But also coinciding, yes. That's that fucking door. Throw up your horns. I fucking love that stuff. Coinciding with Easter, we also have Passover, which is, this year it's March 27th through April 4th. Okay, so Passover first, then Easter. And it's believed that an Italian baker... What a thing to do to the Jews to take their fucking holiday and run it through goddamn No, April no, they, they, get their, they get their holiday. Oh, yeah. Oh, Day. what an asshole thing to do. I think the Passover came before the April Fool's Day holiday. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's, a, it's that's, more colonization. Oh, that's, man. I should have looked up the history of April Fool's Day. Where did When did that become a thing? Well, anywho, let's talk about Passover. It's believed that an Italian baker made the pretzel to look like arms crossed in prayer during the Passover season, sometime between the 300s and the 600s. AD. Which, if you look at a pretzel, kind of, I can kind of see it. Um... I know peasant breads go back a long, yeah. long time. Do you know any people of the Jewish faith? I would love to fucking do it. Oh, man. I really, really, really want to do an episode of the Soul of Wahid. Uh, so, fuck, I'm going to fucking butcher her name. Soleil Moonfry? No, Sola. She used to she used to do Bon Appetit, and now she right. does her own show. Okay. And she does it with Binging with Babish. I would like to fucking do that guy, too. Like interviews, right? Yeah, make sure I, you include like the word interviews. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> in continuity, 
people we would want to interview. <laughs> yeah. They're on the list. Need more water? Oh, no, I'm fine. I, I was just checking. Well, getting back to trivia, because it's Easter. Sorry, I love cooking. I, I would just, I would want a whole show where I just interview all the people that cook the way I would want to cook. I hear you. Oh, fucking Ramsey's, of course, on the list. Perhaps. But I want to do, I want to, like, I don't want a time trial. I, I have genuine things I want to cook with him. Right? Uh-huh. Like, like, there are people that I want to make dishes with. He does. And they're not their fucking stereotypical dishes. Like, I want to have to come up with the dish that they have to make. I always like this idea. Somebody had the idea of, I think it was, I think it was cooks, not bartenders. You name a dish and they have to come up with what, what is that? Like, if someone just comes up with like, blueberry rainbow, you go, okay, make a dish. Right, yeah, that kind of thing, but I, I know what I want to go into the dish. You have to cook with the ingredients I give you, is the show. Well, but that's already been done. Mm. I got some pretty fucking out there ideas for oh. Ramsey and Babish and... Oh my gosh, Cutthroat Kitchen. I miss Cutthroat Kitchen. I've got some stuff for Alton. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I wanna I wanna I wanna see who I can throw curveballs at. You know who I'm always on the fence between like I, I will sit the thing is I'll sit down and I'll think of something and go, Man, I wish I had the fucking budget to cook that. <laughs> so I wanna eat it with them and go, Oh yeah, yeah, okay, that's what that would be like. And then I get to learn through them cooking on the fly. Everything has to be improv. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's the ultimate goal for me. Is I want a show that's completely based in improvisation, and I think cooking is a great medium for that. But I don't want. I don't want it scripted. I want everyone to fucking have a team. And I don't think Gordon does scripts. (laughs) No, his his shows are pretty produced, or at least they were back in the Hell's Kitchen days. Granted, but I think they just so. He's so fucking nice to kids when he... Oh, yeah. Like, he is such a great educator. And that's why I want... That's what I want to do, is have an interview show on educators. Right. That I really want... Like, I think they have good messages to spread. Right. Um, it'd be interesting to see him and Robert Irvine do a thing together. Because they're both strong personality type A guys, and they both have no problem yelling at people who throwing, should know better. Throwing John Tapper. Right. I was going to say, yes, the uh, bar. Like a super group. I see what you're doing here. Yeah, the super group of angry people who are like, you know doing. better. I'm, I'm picking up. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, but the guy I'm on, I'm, I'm always on the fence between you annoy me, but you also, I'm really impressed with your knowledge. Uh, I think his name is Justin Warner, Chef Justin Warner. Young kid does, he just is one of those like Encyclopedia Brown kind of kids who just knows everything. Um, I may be butcher. I may be m- miss saying his last name, but um, one thing I'm not miss saying is, <coughs> you all right? Did you know the idea of the Easter Bunny? Get sorry, back to the trivia. sorry, kids. To get back to the hooch. The idea of the Easter Bunny was originated in the 1700s. In what country do you think? What country gave us the Easter Bunny? Mm, I feel like I've learned this and forgotten it. I feel like this was in a book my dad gave me to read as a kid. You want a hint? Oh, uh, are we going? All right, let me let me start with the region. Okay. Let's see if I can figure it out. Are we going to the UK? Negative. Europe. Well, yeah. Lithuania. Nope. Too specific? Yeah. Well, no, it's just wrong. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Specifically, it's wrong. it's wrong. Yeah, it's specifically wrong. Well, I'd, I'd rather be specifically wrong than figuratively wrong. Right. Oh, I want to go to, like, Norway, but I know that's the wrong direction. Right. I, 
was surprised by this. I I thought Romania? it was I thought it was a Scandinavian thing, but it's not. No, Romania. not Canada. Romania. Oh, Romania, not them either. Easter Bunny would have fangs. <laughs> Russia. Oh wait, the East, the bunny, the fucking Monty Python bunny. <laughs> yeah. Monty Python gave us the bunny. Yeah. No. You ready? Sure. Okay. Deutschland. It is Germany. Germany. In the 1700s. Yep. And along with that. Oh yes, because. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see the Easter Bunny, yeah, yeah. because the Easter Bunny is pure and white and has blue eyes, yeah. 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 Speaking of that. Oh, uh, that's the old uh, Germans bit. Oh, that throws me back to fucking Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. Oh, shout out to the boys. The shout fucking, out. the reasons, the reason I wanted to do a podcast, like an actual sit-down podcast interview with people. Oh, those guys are fucking great. Man, them and Kevin and Mark Bernard with their show, Fat Man Beyond, like, fuck. Yeah. Give them more money. Give them more money to flush out their ideas. Mark Bernard has such good goddamn ideas. Marvel, you sons of bitches. Fucking hire him to be a writer. Let him do his ideas. They're fucking brilliant. Hire Kevin, too. Yeah. Get him to do more shit than Howard the Duck. By the way... They gave him fucking Howard the Duck and then they yanked the carpet. Like, goddamn it, guys. Stop fucking up. I'll never forget watching Howard the Duck with my mom. Oh, that was weird. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whoa. She was in her 70s at the time. Ew. Yeah. Or No, no, wait. How old am I? How old is she now? Oh, shit. She was in her 50s or 60s. Oh, don't ponder your own mortality. Right. But, uh, by the way, folks, if you're listening to this and you want to be on the podcast, you want something you want to promote or, or talk to us about, email twobrainsonebottle at gmail.com. It's in the uh, show notes. Or, um, hey, here's a thought. You got any questions you want us to answer? We'll be getting to one later. Uh, we'll do our best. <laughs> it's a, what do we promise on this podcast? At least 40% quality. 40% quality and the truth as it stands right now. Yep. Um, at least until our information changes. New data, new decisions. Uh, I got one last bit of trivia if you're interested. Sticking with the medieval. The medieval times! That's a Las Vegas local joke there. Um, medieval Times is not Las Vegas local. There's Medieval Times. Yeah, you're right. But no, it, all I remember is in California. I living here and the commercials. Medieval Times. They always say medieval. A medieval children's game. Man, I want to go back. I, look, I... Uh, what? What's I gave it? up certain things when I was a vegan. Yes. And one of them was the treatment of animals, like the mistreatment of animals. That's just, that is a fucking fundamental change for me. They don't mistreat animals at medieval times. Mm, I don't think... Horses love to run, man. They don't need people on their backs to do it. They're bred for that. No, horses were wild at one Like, they were just wild animals. Yes. They could all just go back to being wild animals. That's fair enough. You know, but we, can, we can do We it would not have a lot of what we have in this country. We can do it with movies. Without now. horses. We can, and, we can do know, it with movies now. With we, mo can, we can build m machines to do it instead. We have the technology. Yeah, we don't need to subject yes. horses to. See, to for those of you listening labor. that are wondering, I was being the. Oh, we but we wouldn't have this. I was I was the pe living in the past person, and he was the oh it's two thousand twenty one. There's a better way. I'm not arguing. I, I am not arguing with you. I agree with you that if I, I if I they said hey this is what's happening, I would be all for it. I think I think we no need to spend more money on there's a better way. We know there's a better way. A better way. That's that should be what whatever an old the umbrella. Name for, like, we're fixing America, we're fixing the world a better way. Boom. Hey, you know what? I'm going to say it now. No, I'm not. I was going to say Sean Flynn for president, but I'm not going to fucking. You do not want like, that. You do not like, want that level of hurt. Like, that's me versus the fucking rock. Like, yeah. I, no way. In, in wrestling. <laughs> no way, bro. I, you know what? Oh, man. That is a dream thing for me. I would love to have a match with The Rock. I know it would never happen. It would never happen. But if I could be someone, if I could, if I could turn my life around, Shit, you'd probably just be happy shaking his hand. 
if I could turn around, oh, I would be happy. I would cry. That's the, I would. I cried when I met Stone Cold, and I was a fucking child, and my dad didn't realize how much that meant to me as a. As I, a I didn't know you met Stone Cold. Yeah. The no picture, wonder you have the picture. The picture I have there was hand signed by him. That changed my fucking life, man. I am a wrestling fan for life. Did you ever watch that game? The, the, I went to a wrestling match when I was a kid, and I saw Tony Atlas versus um, Superfly Jimmy Sucker. Superfly. And I went to a SmackDown with my sister. Did you ever watch Stone Cold's? I would love to be able to go and competition go back and show. Do, oh, I miss wrestling shows, but I also I really hate the product that's being put out now, and their business decisions are garbage. No, Stone Cold's competition show, the uh, Broken like, Skull. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Oh man! What I don't like, what I what I didn't like about it, number one, it was getting very very predictable. Very, yeah. I didn't need the the structure. But that. also, I'm looking at it going like, I would I would want to go to. Wrestling they provide school. the unif- They provide the outfits those women are wearing. I would want to go to school for wrestling. Oh yep. Oh man. Oh, I got one. I got. Yeah, there are some wrestling schools around the country I would want to go to. Sorry, that was to answer the question about things that are just out of reach. I'm just trying to bring it back to the other show. Continuity, you know. That was about, that was about dream gear, not I, dreams in general. Oh, you know. I, you know what? I'm taking that question to heart. Okay, well. It resonated with me. From dreams to nightmare, listen to this. Oh, no. Why would you yank me out of the good? I'm just kidding. It's not a nightmare. All right, let's go. A medieval children's game had a priest giving one of the choir boys a hard-boiled egg, and the boys would pass it amongst themselves until the clock struck midnight when whoever was holding it then got to eat it. It doesn't say when they started, so this egg could be like three hours old. I know about that. You know about that? Yeah, I have heard about that game. That is a that is also a game that is played uh, in some frat houses in the Pacific Northwest. What is wrong with people? Oh, man. Yeah. I've been to a frat party or two. I I have not. I, you know what? I am doing a lot of soul searching and working through traumas and blacked out memories. And and you say you want to run for president. That's, oh. Yeah, because you know what? What you're going to get with me is honesty. I think running for president... You may not president- like what you hear, but I don't say... I don't say the things that I say to appease anyone. I say them because I've made up my mind that I'm flexible enough to receive new information and change mm-hmm. my mind. God what do you, forbid. What do you guys and gals and they's and them's, he's and she's and all that think? Should Sean run for president? No. No. no I, shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't. But... And your but, cat can be can run for VP. <laughs> oh, my cat would fucking my cat would dominate me in the polls. Are you kidding? Her like a, look, she's a, and I am speaking as her Cali. counterpart. Yes. I have been with her for almost ten years. Mm-hmm. If you come at me about my cat, I will tell you to go fuck yourself. She is more personable than me, and she is a bitch who only likes love when she wants it on her schedule. I have. Learn to appreciate love when I can frickin' get it. You are gonna love this podcast episode, sir, because oh, the weird news coming down the pipe later on oh, is, no. is cat centric. Wow, this is amazing. It's like it's a show around my brain. That's <laughs> terrifying. This is terrible. Well, you are half of the two brains in this two brain one ball. Oh my god. So oh. here's a question for you. Alright. Have you ever had a dog? Which did you prefer, a cat or a dog? And you have a cat now, so that no. kind of answers my question. No. No. No? I've loved every animal I've ever had. Every, every sperm is sacred. I believe in the Rainbow Bridge. I don't... <laughs> sorry, I'm choking. <laughs> don't make me laugh. Make it come out my nose. I don't, think, I don't think Rainbow I, Bridge applies to pets. Yes, it does. Rainbow Bridge... Yes, it is. Rainbow Bridge is all about pets. It's cats and dogs and okay. fish and let, let, every pet you've ever. In owned. that case, let me let yes, me let me bring I it down for a second. Every animal I've ever had, every single one of them, from every goldfish to every little mini shark thing that would sit at the bottom of the fish tank that didn't really do a whole lot, except sit there and eat the scum and the algae. Blech. To candle my puffy orange cat. Candle. 
candle. So, uh, okay. Candle, because she was the light of my life. Let me switch topics. Not switch no, topics. No, let, me, let me change no, change my question. No, margarita, a little poodle. Aww. My first experience with cancer. Okay, I was I was going cancer. to ask, I was going to ask. I'm just going to keep going. Have you had a pet die? Yeah. From a disease. Yeah. So have I. Yeah. Also yeah. cancer. I think I told you about Zabaka. That was when yeah. Mm-hmm. That was when I told you about margarita. It's it is a tumor. <clears throat> no, the cancer ate away at her hip, and it just oh ate man, the, it ate the bone. Oh, and that so sucks. Her back legs just stopped working. Oh man. And I remember having to pick her up and move her. Oh man. Oh, that's there we go. And, and that's, that's what, why you listen to this podcast. That's what fuels the show is tra- Sean's trauma. Oh, I've, Josh has trauma too, but I buried a lot of mine. Shawarma with Sean and his trauma. <laughs> oh, shawarma, trauma, shawarma. <laughs> shawarma with Sean and his trauma. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! It is my own coming this fall. <laughs> Doctor Seuss book. Speaking of Doctor Seuss. Yeah. What the fuck, man? As well, uh, I'm glad we didn't get into this the last episode. Of the hundreds of books he written, six were have been pulled because. Oh, of, well, no. Christ. Here's the deal. Look, okay, the, I, get I, it. I heard I get it. This is hold part on, of me, progressing but as a country. I, what I heard, this is a good analogy. The estate is basically saying we recognize that these are mildly racist. That's not who we are anymore, or that's not who we want him, you know, to be represented. Look, Look, so we're pulling it. It's the same as saying, "Hey, we we know we we messed up with the whole going back to classic Coke thing, or going back to New Coke rather, going to New Coke. We know we messed up with New Coke. We're gonna pull that out. That that's bad." They're saying this is not who we are. These don't represent who Dr. Seuss, uh, right, really right. was at right. anymore, and and they're a product of the time. So look, man, I get their side of it. Yeah. But my thing is, I still want to read them. Oh, yeah. Red I fish, still blue want fish. to read all of them. I, you know, I grew up with Dr. Seuss, and I didn't appreciate it when I had it. And I still want to fuel that nostalgia book. Mm. Let me tell you something. I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to fucking read the six. Let me tell something to and you. And I don't need the people sending me the fucking one-page thing. I, I've seen that. Look, I've seen it. I don't get the fucking... Look. Uh, well, hold on. Let me say I something. I am nobody to cancel because I don't mean anything to anyone. <laughs> if anybody's listening to this, I, at this point, I don't think that they're going to be canceling us based on what we're saying here. But let me say something to I Jules. Just, let me say something. Okay? I always want to learn. Let me say I something wanna, to Jules. I want to Jules. read. Sean, let me say something. You, anybody who's ever for some reason, had to sh- like start thinking about gifts for a new baby, whether it's yours or not, when you start looking at children's books, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I miss this so much. And y- y- what you said, the Dr. Seuss books are going to be right up there. And I, for one, we still have them in the house. My kid's 13. She's not reading them anymore, but we still have them in the house. And every now and then I look at them going, I remember reading those to you. Those were your first experiences with words like, there's a zocket in my pocket. <laughs> so, I personally... I was, I was with you the entire time. And I was thinking, that's the reason I have books on my shelf that look the way they do, because... <laughs> Growing up, when I would go to my grandparents' house and spend time with my grandfather, he had books on the shelf, and there was such a wide array of books. And I was like, and I asked him, did you read all these? He goes, I've read most of them. I'll read more of them. Yep. And every time I saw him, he had a different fucking book in his hand. I miss that so much about that man. I miss talking to him. Because this is where we would go, and this is the kind of shit we would talk about. It's just be like, how do we fix the world? <laughs> you know, like it would, it would just be baseline. How do I leave it a better place than I found it? 
That's. And I think. It's I think just, you answered your own question you there. To, yeah, you have to. You have to look, just keep learning. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I've said it before. And want to learn. I've said it on this podcast. I've said it on the channel. Right. Don't just don't make it worse. Stop. Stop if, active, does it make it worse? Yeah, stop actively making it worse. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you know something's bad, change your attitude. Change yeah. change it for the better. You're, everyone's going to be happier. But I also think the people that are unhappy after the change are unhappy because of something else it, as well. Like, that's not the thing that's making them unhappy. Right. They're unhappy because they're stuck. They're unhappy because they're somewhere they don't want to be. They're doing something they don't want to do. They're not making enough money to live where they want to live. Or they're living or they're stuck living in a place where they don't want to live. That's actually a good lead into our question this week or this month. Okay? We have a question from Chris from Oakland, Oaktown. Asks When did you first feel like a professional musician? And I would like to answer first. Okay, for me, I never have, because music has always been a hobby for me, and if I got paid, it was a bonus, but I never relied on music to make a living, and in some ways, I feel like that hurt me musically, in terms of, I didn't, there was not the impetus to have to get better, as, you know, to... To, to like, if I'm going to make a living at this, I need to be the best I can at this particular thing or make myself marketable in some way. But on the other hand, I like my life now and music is, is enjoyable. It's not a, a, a thing I've tried to pay the rent with. Uh, that for me, I'm not a professional musician and I never will be. I've made some money from it. I've made albums. I've gotten paid to play. With you. <laughs> now, as someone who is, in my opinion, a professional musician, when did you first feel like I'm a professional now? Was it just the first time you got paid to play music? No, it was before then. So you knew your worth I, before I, that? No, I took the word professional with the word serious. And so the first time I felt serious about a performance. Carnegie Hall? No, way, way before then. Seventh grade, sixth grade, sixth grade. There, I was doing a concert. No, seventh grade. I was doing a concert and I had, I was doing a recital. And I had lost my music. And instead of doing the responsible thing and going to get the music, uh oh, I you took went. some took some score pages and played what I knew from memory. <laughs> and you pulled it off? No. <laughs> the parts that I grabbed were for the uh, glockenspiel and not for the snare drum. Oh no! And so nobody played the snare drum. <laughs> oh my god, you might as well have had the sheet upside down. <laughs> and then we go to the uh, we go to the adjudication and we're going and we got handpicked to go to the adjudication I got singled out in front of everyone. For those that don't know what an adjudication is? Uh, the band gets pulled aside into a separate room, kind of like a choir room, if you've ever been in a high school choir room or a high school band room. Um, and your adjudicator comes up and critiques your performance. And they mentioned how with the piece that we were doing, um, the snare drum was really important. And then they asked who the snare drum player was, and then I had to say it was me, and then I, in front of everybody I had to say that I had lost my music. So instead of doing the responsible thing, I was an idiot and got publicly shamed for it. 
So that could have gone better. But the first time I felt like a professional, mm -hmm. then. When you felt the responsibility? When I felt how much I let everybody down, I was I thought to myself, uh, I want to take this more seriously. That is actually really interesting that you took... How old are you? Eleven, twelve. Wow. So at that age, you already were taking responsibility for... Well, you didn't have a choice. <laughs> but you, you were basically saying, this is responsibility. This, this is what it means to be a serious musician. Mm -hmm. And it's being prepared. Maybe it was, maybe it was 13, maybe, maybe 13, 12. Maybe that's, that's wow, man. Maybe that's closer. That explains a lot, too. About I started playing music at 10. Yeah. Like, I, I had always, because we grew, I told you about the Berg, I did the uh, Berg Cage piano thing, right? No. No? Oh. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Uh, the Berg Cage piano was, is the piano that I will be taking eventually from my mom's house and it uh, it's over a hundred years old it is her great grandmother's or her grandmother's solid oak piano it is heavy enough that it breaks piano dollies and I grew up listening to jingles playing on the TV and would flip the uh, the cover over the keys and start trying to figure it out. And that's how I got into music, was just figuring out and imitating the things that I heard. And then that led into why I love impressionists and voice actors. Uh-huh. And, um... Now, for me, the first time I felt like just a, mus a musician yeah. would be, because up till then, I'd only ever sung. Mm. Whether it was singing with uh, my first ever band, Magic Viewing Patch, MVP, yo, or singing in choir or singing whatever, I just sung. Mm. Which, yes, I know that that's also an instrument and, and that's, you know, that's being a musician. But at that time, to me, being a musician was either I'm writing music or I'm playing something with my hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the first time I was a musician, I think, honestly, was the first time I, I think it was when my, I officially finished recording all the parts for my first album. Ooh, okay. Now, I, I, I'm sorry, let me back up. I didn't record all the parts. <laughs> recording all my parts. That was my first time where I was dealing with musicians. I, I only, we only knew each other through rehearsing for this CD recording. I, I stumbled upon them, rehearsing as a three-piece band, talked to them, they re and we realized, hey, why not, you know, do this thing together? Mm -hmm. So just like I introduced you to my music when you became the drummer for The Suspense, I introduced them to my first album. And we would just, uh, that's a whole other story, but it's one of those, I have what, what I call the luck of the court right, my last, that's my last name, where every so often something happens, you're like, that don't, that would only happen to me. How did this happen? That this is luckier than I deserve. But um, that's when I've, I felt the responsibility, like you said, because here we are doing my music for my CD and my my CD release party, and um, it became evident at rehearsals really quick. These guys are number one counting on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pay them some money for this. They're counting on me to be ready with my part. And I'd never had to do that before because I wrote all the songs by myself, 
on an acoustic guitar and it was weird. It, it was, it, it was good. And it was important, but I think the first time you, um, you get that, oh, it's on me and things are going to go bad if I don't figure this out. That becomes, I, to me, that's when I became a musician. I don't think I'm, I definitely don't feel like a professional musician, even after all the years I, I did it for money, I did it for exposure, whatever. I never felt like I'm, when someone says, hey, we need XYZ type of musician, they think of me. I've never been on a label or been on a contract other than for a show and, and a lot of other metrics that I would compare to, or that I would hold up to say, this is a professional musician. And even though I'm 48, there's this little part of me, the 20 something year old, it was like, why did you wait so long to get to care about music? To start. I'm feeling that now. But you, how old, when did you start? 10? 11? Yeah. Right. It's, I think it's, it's a very much akin to, uh. Do you think that's a generational thing? Mm, no. Or do you think it's a philosophy thing? <sighs> You think it's nature or nurture? Did you ever see the Dolph Lundgren movie where he's a, a samurai or, or and and he did you see that one? Uh, Tom Cruise was a samurai. No, 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 no. Dolph Lundgren. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a a, a, a Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's kid. Yeah, Brandon Lee was in it. It was like his first major kind of role, and he was the buddy cop partner of him. And he did Kung Fu, and whereas Dolph Lundgren did Dolph Lundgren fighting. Right. And, but he, he after a fight, he looks at him and goes, when did you start training? He goes, uh, I was seven. He said, forms a little sloppy. He said, I was seven. That's how I feel about like music. You're like, I wish I'd started earlier. I'm like, you were 10. <laughs> I didn't start till I was in college caring about music. I've always cared about music. My dad, oh man, that is just fucking rooted in my family caring about music. Right. You know, my my dad always said he couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. My mom always claimed that she could play piano. <clears throat> and then mysteriously would plunk around on it every once in a while. Yeah. Katie went to college for fucking flute and piccolo. That's your sister? Yeah. My sister. Okay. Oh, I probably shouldn't say her name. Fuck. Can we believe that? <laughs> Shit. No worries, man. Sorry. Um, it's not like they can't find it out by Googling your name and siblings. I know. I know. It's on your Facebook page. I know. I don't accept friend requests from everybody, though. It's on your Facebook about you page. I, siblings, if you're connected on Facebook and you're a sibling, oh. I'm telling you, it's there. Okay. Well, I'll also try to respect their privacy because I know they're more okay. cautious about that. I don't mind. Okay. Uh, I don't mind people digging into my past. I know it's pretty fucking rocky in here. <laughs> Future Josh, if you're listening to this, Go back and bleep out his sister's name. That's why I did a clap mark for you. It, I know. I did something. You have to understand, we're 44 minutes in. I may miss it bouncing yeah. around. It That's happens. Fine. So That's fine. I do my best. You said some things and they took me to some different places. That's all good, man. Do you want me to catch you up on where I went or do you have a schedule to keep? I was, well, no, it's schedule. It's unfiltered. But what I was going to say was we had musical type things around too. I grew up dusting the fucking piano every week, and I I I had to do a half hour practice on it, like every day for a while. But I never saw my parents do music. But my dad sold his old trumpet to buy me my first electric guitar. I remember thinking, "You play trumpet? When was that?"
But no, man, go where go where you need to go. I've got a great little three line, like a bear in the woods. Go go if you need to go. I've got a great little three line marketing thing. Go. Cool. So you always hear about nature versus nurture, right? Right. How about we nurture inquisitive nature? Yes. I'm down with that. How about all the things that everyone's curious about when they're kids? Mm-hmm. We say, you know what? Go do that then. And then we'll pay you money to do that because that's what you're passionate about. And that's ultimately what we should feed is passion. I agree. Um, Everyone should be able to live luxuriously. Nobody has to live in poverty. We can change that. We can have, I, I really want people to, I want to defer to Dr. Drew and, and his talking about the homelessness situation in LA specifically, but but the man has great ideas. Give him funding. Give him backing. Mm. I like him. He's someone who speaks on a rational level. Speaking, uh, uh, Mike Rowe of Dirty Jobs fame. Yeah, is, he quoted as saying, "People will tell you chase your dreams. That's garbage. Or that's not. That's bad advice. Chase your passion. Chase yeah. your talent." And I always thought, yeah. Because you can, like, I have, I would, I, I have a dream of being an astronaut. It's never going to happen. Or I have a dream talent, of talent is a fucking myth. Talent is a myth, but talent pa- is a myth. But you passion have, is not. You, you have, you have abilities and and strengths and weaknesses. There, when you are born. Yeah, and you will tap into some of them, and some of them you won't for a while. But if you can yeah. find it early, feed it. Exactly. Fucking feed it. Nurture your inquisitive nature. I don't believe in talent. Not anymore. When I see kids that are that are monsters that are fucking nine, My drums. Years, nine yeah. years old, I don't care. Like it's it, I'm, there's no jealousy there. I'm just there's I wanna a, I wanna play with them. I, yeah. That's a whole nother show. I wanna start putting fucking um, Did you see the Dave Grohl and uh I forget her name? But she's like 10. Yeah. Like and the, wanna, that back and forth, I was like, you're doing it right, Dave Grohl. Right, but I want to play with both of them. Yeah. But no, Dave Grohl did a drum off with her back and forth with videos. Right. And I'm like, yes, you're doing it right. You're not saying, you know. Right, but then I want to sit there as a moderator and talk to them both and be like, hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, I, I bet yeah. she wants to be in the same room with him. She could think about all she he could teach her and be like. You're so lucky you're not going to have to go. Right, but as the moderator, all I'm doing is trying to Mm -hmm. nurture the inquisitive nature. Nice. Right? There's a concept. There's a concept. There's an idea. There's forethought. There's latter thought. Oh, hey. God damn it, Jacob, get off my fucking phone. Hey, Christopher Walken, when'd you get here? Hey. Wow. Sat down. It's a little chilly in here. (laughs) The window's open. Because we need some ventilation. Speaking of inquisitive nature, yeah. If I can get Sean back for a second, I th- I promised you cat weird news. Oh no! It's weird news, weird news, weird stuffs happening, and it's on the internet, and it's weird news. Ha <laughs> ha! I get sad every time you do this. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh uh, shit on a dick. Sure. <laughs> Let's go. Hit me. <laughs> So you're you're an airline pilot. You're flying a Boeing seven thirty seven. Okay, you're about a half hour into your flight, and suddenly from the cockpit, I'm glad you did this after I flew. Yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> I I didn't even pick. Oh, I didn't even. Yeah. Put that together, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, now that you've been flying, but picture this. Okay, you're you're a pilot seven thirty seven. Prefacing because I have an idea of yeah. where it's gonna go. And thirty minutes into your flight, suddenly. A feral cat just leaps out of the cockpit at you and t- attacks you. Okay. Yeah. Needless to say, the plane got turned around <laughs> and went back for an emergency landing. Yeah. Some feral cat had, during like cleaning, the the plane had been parked. Yep. And uh, hey, folks, you got to go out. You got to go out in the cold months, and you got to bang on your hoods before you get into them. <laughs> you got to bang on your hoods before you get into right. your fucking cars. Check your tires and stuff. Oh, do not let cars get or cats get up in your wheel wells. Well, apparently this this plane was parked for cleaning. Feral cat got in there and just hid away in the cat cockpit. And you want to talk about like this was not covered in my training. <laughs> 
fucking cat out of nowhere. It was like, suddenly, a stove. You know, he's like, what? But I just thought you'd appreciate that. I was just like, oh, man. and I, I mean, I want to believe the plane, like the passengers didn't even notice. Because it's a plane. It isn't like you bump the wheel and suddenly the whole plane just goes, ah. And also the co-pilot is there. So like, the f- but all I can think is, what if they were in the middle of, you know, yeah, this is your pa- captain speaking. We're at a such and such altitude. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, and in conjunction with that, another bit of weird news from uh, the UK, London's Euston Station, E-U-S-T-O-N, probably butchering that. Um, Avanti train, cat just decided to sit on top of this train for two hours. They didn't, the train couldn't move for two hours. And when the cat finally decided to get up, it just swaggered away. It's like, fuck you, I'm a cat. Whoever was driving that train was a cat owner because cat owners know once you sit in a chair and there's a cat yeah. in your lap, you do not get up. Well, You're just stuck there until that cat gets up. But the cat, yeah, no, like like the cat just got up there while the train was stopped and it was just like, yeah, I know. This is nice. Insane. Yeah, it's like oh, I was going to sit down for just a second, but now there's a cat on my lap and now I can't move, so I'll just die. Well, the cat was probably thinking, I'll, I'll just, just sit here. Die here. The cat was probably thinking, I'll just sit here for a second, that, and now, I, oh, you want me to move? I'm going to sit here forever. <laughs> I think that I think the driver was a cat owner. Right. Well, one last bit. I want to of... interview them too. Oh my gosh, Sean interviews everybody. Anybody who I think has an interesting life. Hey, yep. what's it like to have a cat that gets stuck on top of your fucking train? Seriously, dude, that's your title. Sean interviews anyone or everyone. Everyone. Yes, anything. <laughs> Fuck could... it. Put a goat on the mic. I would love to spend time around a goat. I would be so delighted. Oh my god. I, I want to be... interview the ferns that Zach Galifianakis sits between. <laughs> I could... I would give them such a great platform. Don't even. <laughs> you guys don't have to be held down by the white male that is Zach Galifianakis. Because <laughs> the man keeps me here. down, Ma. You guys can come here for exposure. Jesus. Alright, I got one more bit of weird news oh, for man, you. Oh man, that's what I should do. I should create a fucking... Twitter account for the two ferns. I bet it already has one. And oh it has more God. followers than I do. Because oh, everyone does. Because I don't care about fame. And you can follow Sean on Twitter at... Oh, shit, you can. Sean, I don't... Sean Eric, I believe? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it'll be... Is there a description down below? Yes. I'll, I will type it all up and send it all to you, and then you can just. Uh, have it's okay. It as a I've got it, man. Oh, okay. I, I tag you every time you're in a YouTube video. I tag you on the Twitter promotion, buddy. I'm so shit at social media. Hey, it's okay, buddy. I'm really. Oh, come on, that. guy. You know I love you. It is something I need to work on. Mm. All right. Well, uh, before we wrap up here, sorry, guys. I want to switch from cats to bunnies again. Well, for I didn't think that we were about. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you were talking about recording. And I was like, well, first time I was recording, I was in high school. What? No, we're, we're past that now, man. We're no. on weird news. No, you, you don't get to, I had thoughts. Thoughts of, I had feelings about th- things. Yeah, you, said, you said things. Oh, I, don't get, I don't get to recap all Go for it. Th- no, it's fine. No, no, it's fine. Go for it. No, no, it's fine. We don't have enough time for my recap. It's fine. I, <sighs> it's fine. I will sit here and be silenced. I'm only here by your bemusement. <laughs> Use me like the cheap toy that I am. All right, cool. So, <laughs> no, please regale us. No, you're good. No, he's just gonna pout. Otherwise, go on. No, you, no, you have a schedule to keep. No, I don't. All right, fine. So, moving from cats to bunnies. Oh no, not another. We're looping bunny. it back. We're looping it back, not baby. Another bunny thing. A Pennsylvania woman, an artist. I don't know. I don't want to interview bunnies. No. Um, Sean will interview anyone except bunnies, and now I'm canceled. Nice. So, anyway, this woman, she, she does, uh, she, she uses things in ways they're not meant to be used as art. Is that a... That is just is somebody that, doing donuts, man. Nice. Look, look, every recording there is a sound. I know. This one is donut guy. Freaking hell. And not even the good kind of donuts. We're not getting fatter because... Oh, those are those come after. My, my wife only lets me come up to hang out with you because there's a donut shop on the way home. 
<laughs> She's happy that I come to drink with you because oh, I, I'm going to yeah, bring I'm gonna donuts. You start getting donuts on the way up here. Why the fuck am I going donutless? I told you about this place. You know where it is. No, I just. Uh, Anywho, I haven't, I haven't made it out. Pennsylvania not, woman, are you ready oh, for, for this amazement? I'm not ready. This woman spent two and a half years collecting and making dust bunnies out of dust bunnies. Both her, around her own place and donated. She finds it interesting thinking that she can take what comes off of humans and make something out of it. And they're, they're life-size bunnies. I've seen pictures, man. They're gigantic. I don't want to interview her. <laughs> oh, I don't want to. All right. Well, you got one. You found one. Yeah. I don't <laughs> want to interview. Oh no! Oh, I... I got the fucking heebie-jeebies on that. Sorry, but uh, everyone should live their truth. And some people like dust bunnies. What can I say except you're welcome? Oh my God, no! That and thank ties, you. That ties it back into me fighting the rock again. You know, <laughs> in, our, in our campaign trails. Oh my gosh! I'm oh, so no. one of my happiest, and yet. Melancholy benefit. memories. This is the benefit of shooting episodes back to back behind the scenes. By the way, what is continuity? You get continuity. You get, yeah, continuity. But one of my one of my moment fa- shifting ideas. One of my favorite memories is making that video that TikTok to punish my daughter about how I was punishing my daughter for lying to us. I showed it to you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> so you shamed your child. Using social media. What I did was I ruined that song for her. This kid, honestly, I could go on and on. I can't explain all this teenage phenomenon. The mood swings and attitude shifts better parents than me are confused by all this. We gave you a chance. We tried to be nice. You, I, uh, I, I can't even do the whole thing. I, I run out of breath. But, yeah. Uh, I, made a, I made a great TikTok about my how basically my daughter lied to us and she's grounded. And I took her door off her hinges. And... We all relive the traumas in our lives different ways. But you know what? I was publicly shamed a lot around of around a lot of bad first negatives too. And if I may say so, I believe I called that. That was something I wrote down in my little book. Nice. To recap, just to show you people. That I you can. people. You people. You people who have been holding... No, the tens. No, it's really, it's my <laughs> social anxiety that's been holding me back. This gives me a, a great... Oh, yeah. Write, great, it, write, it, write it down. It's not a... It's great not way a, to go through this stuff. Um, I was going to say, the first time I felt like a recording artist was in high school. Because I got to work with fucking Buddy Greco. Ooh. Yeah. Jazz guy. Jazz guy in Palm Springs, California. Nice. Wonderful, wonderful man. And... That... Oh, just a great... A great... It, it fueled my love for jazz. And it fueled my love for music. And it fueled my love for... The reason I love to see musicians play as a fan is because it brings a smile to their faces. Yeah. That's where I wanted to go with it. I always enjoy musicians that look like they're having fun on stage. Yeah. If you look like it's a job, fucking go do something else then. Yeah, quit my text message. What? Right? Like, <laughs> if, you, if you've been that jaded, go do something else. Do something else you're passionate about. <laughs> well, that was it. That, that tied us back into everything and recapped my stuff, and it put us just at about... The second hour mark. There you go. We want to thank you there for listening. the first hour mark. Yeah. We, we do want to thank you guys for listening. If you have, like we said, if you have any questions you want us to try and answer, uh, email us at twobrainsonebottle at gmail.com. G- 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 yeah. We answered uh, Chris's question about the professional, and we answered Diane's on the previous. Okay. Yeah. So this is what happens when you batch record episodes. But we appreciate you listening. Sorry, I also grabbed my pen and paper too late. I should have done that. I should have started that. Hey, look, this is what you get with me. You're getting honesty. You may get mistakes, but we're all on a journey together to grow. Oh.
honesty is such an empty word. And with that, I want to thank you, Sean, for potting with me. Hey, man. This is uh, one of the better parts of my day. Oh, thank you. Better parts of my week. I want to thank you also for um, being a consistent presence in my my YouTube journey. Really, it's just we're, we're, we're bringing people along for the ride in both of our lives. Yeah, and thank you for coming along on the ride. And it is a hell of a ride so far, but I feel 2020 mm-hmm. has been a hell of a ride for a lot of people. And then we had 2021, and it's, it's feeling a little too much like yeah. more of the same. In the meantime, remember to be amazing. Be kind to each other, and don't make it worse. Uh, feel free to check the show notes for you know, link to how you can help out the channel even more. And uh, we'll see you next time on Two Brains, One Bottle, and hopefully over in room six. Hit it! ba da ba ba da ba